of our shared visions of each other's town. I'm standing at a bus stop in Aubrey near Wakefield in search of Yorkshire because Rich has got this theory that you can best observe the people and places of Yorkshire by sitting on a bus. Usually when I'm on a bus the, the, I'm, I'm interested in the people travelling with me so I get good, very good at drawing the backs of people's heads but uh, uh, views from behind can be very expressive you can tell what people are thinking about from yeah. the, the stamps whether, whether yeah. they're interested, bored or whatever yeah. When I do my writing class and we get to the part of the curriculum where we're looking at dialogue I always say to the students just spend this weekend something about on buses and just listen to what people are saying is that going to market or they're doing the shopping or they're going to hospital or wherever they're going and you get some of the finest dialogue that, that you could wish for you, know, you don't need to create dialogue it's there it's already there in the in the atmosphere for you well, it um, concentrates your mind drawing because uh, the person you're drawing might be getting off at the next bus stop yeah. so uh, you want to get um, a sort of, oh it's getting off <laughs> <laughs> This plant's lovely with light on it. Yeah, this is um, Himalayan balsam, which yeah. uh, when the Victorians introduced it, they thought it was a, a greenhouse plant, but right. it's escaped since then and spread along riverbanks. It's got them explosive pods on it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they help it spread a lot. Yeah. It almost looks a bit orchid-like. Have, have you thought of that? Yeah, I had a friend who swore to me that it was a member of the orchid family, but look yeah. at those leaves, they're not well, orchid not leaves, they're divided. It's just the way it's petals open. Yeah. It's morning. What's it called this one? Don't well, it go, it? just Coxley Quarry. Uh. Quite overgrown now. It's we, been a long time since it was used as a quarry. Yeah, I, I, I imagine Victorian times. I don't know yeah. whether they kept it up uh, after yeah. World War One. How, how did they work these quarries? Cool. Uh, Scaffold. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I like the atmosphere of this place and, yeah. and these um, twisted willows, they've got so much character that they're a real gift to draw. Because yeah. um, I, I worked for years as a wildlife illustrator and for that you try to draw like the ideal uh, willow mm. and if you look around here the, the ideal willow doesn't exist. They've all been blown in the gales or they've fallen into the stream and re-sprouted and uh, they're, they're writhing around. Mm. So, uh, I, when I'm drawing a willow like this, I feel it's a portrait of that individual willow. I can't avoid seeing these as uh, symbols as well, because you, you've sort of got birth, death and regrowth all, all in the one tree, haven't you? It's quite a big statement. It seems to me that you, the, it's the fragility of the human condition you're talking about here. Yeah, how fragile I am. You see? Really? So, so really, I mean, these, uh, I, I think in a way, anything an artist draws is like a self-portrait of that artist. You know, so, so they, these, uh, they certainly look like I, I feel. <laughs> so what you're telling me, Richard, is that you've got to a certain age, and you're responding to that certain age by painting something that's cracking and decaying. Well, you, yeah, I th I th it'll come to you later, Ian, in life. You'll, you'll learn to enjoy your midlife crisis. I mean, you do articulate it really well. It, it is about coming to see beauty in the everyday things, rather than it being beautiful straight away. It's like you go to some, what some people might say are inconsequential places to, to do artwork. You know, it's only said to me that, that an artist working in Normington it would be easy to laugh and say, well, you know, what, what, what's beautiful in Normington? What is there there? It's uh, something about Normington is the history in it. Like with this willow, it's the history in the willow that attracts me. I, I wouldn't want to, you know, say if we'd gone to uh, Hallow Car and done the most beautiful, fresh-looking cherry tree, it wouldn't have appealed to me as much. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, probably at Harlow Car they'd want to get rid of this. <laughs> they'd say, well, you know, what an eye so. Yeah. And um, that, that somehow has um, more pathos about it for me mm. than if I went, say, perhaps somewhere like Harrogate where mm. everything's beautifully scrubbed up. Would it be fair to say that, that you're rooted in Yorkshire? What does Yorkshire mean to you? 
I think as a wildlife illustrator, at times I thought the place for me should be on the remote northwest coast of Scotland. Yeah. But I, really it isn't because my roots are here. Mm. And, and like I say, when I walk in the valley, it's, it's not just the natural history, it's the memories I ha have of it which yeah. g give the place a particular resonance for me. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking about um, the, the kind of what you might call the mythology of the place, the spirit of the place. Yes. And part of that is uh, my life in this place and, and the people I've walked here with. Yeah, yeah, yeah.